where you can't get out. It's one of those nightmares where you think you're safe and then you find out that you're not. Jacob's Ladder is the story of one man's battle with his own demons as he journeys toward death. Significant parts of that journey were filmed, but never made it to the screen. Now, with the help of director Adrian Lyne, they can be seen for the first time. Jacob's Ladder began as a nightmare when writer Bruce Joel Rubin dreamed he was trapped in a New York subway with no way out. The script that evolved from that nightmare became famous as one of the ten best unproduced screenplays in Hollywood. I had a lot of people who expressed interest in directing the movie, and a lot of them were people who had made low-budget horror films. And I thought, it's not worth it to me to have this film made badly. I would rather it simply stay on the shelf and then Adrian Lyne's name was mentioned. And in a certain sense, if I was to have a dream director, he would have been it. Adrian has great visual virtuosity. He has an enormous sense of humanity. We were very closely involved uh, and, uh, together. Uh, and, uh, and I think it was a very fruitful kind of a, a relationship. Uh, it was terrific. You know, sometimes it can be kind of tough with the writing. You know, he had a vision of what devils, demons, or whatever should look like. For example, like a Bosch painting with beaks and mixtures of animals and humans. And, 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 and in the end, I didn't know how to do that without people laughing. But there was a line in the movie that said, and then the wall disappears, and behind it, we see a vision of the void. And I always loved the line. I always loved it, in a sense, in terms of the literary feeling of it. And Adrian thought it had a wonderful literary appeal. But he said, Bruce, just tell me one thing. How many carpenters do I need to build the void? And that was, it was like a wonderful, a wonderful lesson for me, because I, I'm a writer. And Adrian showed me that his task was to translate these ideas into something cinematic. You know, a writer's imagination can, can go on forever. There's no limit to his imagination. But if, of course, unfortunately, there is for a director. You have to some time, somewhere, nail it down and say, well, we're going to do it like this. We see the wing, then we see the wing, and all of that stuff. We had enormous dialogue throughout the whole process of making this film and for almost a year before we started shooting about what this film was about what it really was trying to say and that dialogue went on to the last day of shooting and it went on to the last day of editing because in the end we cut out approximately a quarter of the movie we cut out huge sections of jacob's ladder that were cinematically i would say some of the best work adrian line has ever done in his life all of those scenes were in the, in, in the first rough cut, which we kind of showed to an audience, and we felt that it, it just felt like it was overkill, that, that, that people were kind of, people came, came out of the movie catatonic. It was just one step too many. The cuts that were made in the film came near the end as Jacob learns the truth about Vietnam. The scenes that follow take Jacob further into his own hell as he fights to hang on to life. Are you telling me this now? Because I can get rid of the demons. I can block the ladder. I have an antidote. We can kill them off, chemically speaking. They'll all disappear. It's chemistry, Jacob. I know I created it. Please, let me help you. I'm getting a hold of your records. If you knew, why didn't you say anything? Because the truth can kill, my friend. 200 men died out there that day. This isn't a story they'd ever want told, you know? When Paul's car blew up, I realized the scope of the thing. I knew they would do anything to hide the truth. formula back in now. I just never got a chance to use it. Never? 
No, I hoped I'd never have to. Take a seat on the bed. Coat off. Stick out your tongue. What is it? Don't worry, just take it. It'll free your head. Okay? Come on. I don't know. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. No one ever said I wouldn't be shitting in my pants every step of the way, huh? Come on, stick out your tongue. Relax, just relax. Just relax. Just relax.
Demons are gone, Jacob. They're gone. You're gonna be fine. Really? Really? Better living through chemistry. That's my motto. When the ceiling broke, there had to be a sort of a rush of air, like this incredible sort of torrent of air. And so we used a, a high-pressure hose, which just out of kind of camera range that, 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 that distended his cheeks. And we all aimed it into his mouth, so his mouth kind of opened up, like in this kind of leer, you know, which worked well, I think. It was good. I really liked the scene after it. Uh, you know, when he's kind of waking up and and you really sense that the man is is, is better. But then, of course, you move on and, and he, he decides to get out of town and then they re you go to the station and then, then they re reappear again, the, uh, his paranoia and, and, his, and his fright. Next. Yeah. On the way to Chicago, please. How many? Uh, one. Coach? Yeah. 51-25. His voice says, dream on, which tells him that the antidote, in fact, didn't work. And he goes home to his house where he lived with his wife and three children. 
and he finds Jesse is there and soon comes to realize that Jesse is indeed a, a force, not an actual human being. Sarah? Is that you? So, Jake. Jesse. What are you doing here? I've been waiting for you. She turns into me. When stripped of her identity and her, her facial features is actually the death mask, the dead Jacob, the Jacob that uh, isn't with us anymore. There's no clear kind of definement of, of what is real and what is unreal. You're dealing with three time sequences. You're dealing with ostensibly the past, which is Vietnam. You're dealing with also the past memory of his relationship with his wife before Vietnam. And you're also dealing with an imagined relationship after the war, which in fact didn't happen. It was this mixture of the real and the imagined and memory. Then you have to go back and re-examine the whole movie to see that it was telling you exactly where it was going all the way through. It's just we have such denial in ourselves about death. We avoid the idea of death so completely in our lives that we also deny Jacob's dying just the way he is. You have to understand that life really has come to an end, that you understand why it has come to an end, and you can move on, and that you need to make peace with your life in order to leave this world, and that the process of dying is the process of making peace. It's a process of coming to understand who you are, what your life was, and then going on. And that's what Jacob is doing. If you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. If you missed any part of Jacob's Ladder or would like to see it again, here are the other showings. Wednesday, November 6th at 10 p.m. Sunday, November 10th at 12.45.